I'm Paul Erskine, publisher of the News Enterprise Weekly Newspaper, and a longtime observer of the passing parade in western Orange County. I have long felt a need to capture on videotape for present, present and succeeding generations some of the early history of Los Alamitos and Rossmore, as recalled by the people who were a major part of the shaping of that history. Some time ago, I, spent, I, I spoke to the uh, then president of the Los Alamitos Historical Museum, Alice Jemsa, and through the cooperation of her organization, the Municipal Usage Corporation, and of course the wonderful pioneers you will see interviewed, we are presenting to the viewers the history of our community. Copies of these tapes will be stored at the Mu Museum Media Center for review by the public and for student research. Copies will also be sent to Los Alamitos' sister city, Dawson Creek, British Columbia, Canada. Sidney Gordon is our director, and Mert Parashow will be your guide and host throughout the six recorded segments of our historical past. Part one is a guided tour through the Los Alamitos Historical Museum, where you will look at the recorded data and artifacts of the city's history. Parts two and three introduce Los Alamitos pioneers, who will chat about the recollection of people and happenings of an earlier day. Part four concerns the Los Alamitos fire volunteer fire department and how in the early days this vital activity had more to do than just the care and treatment of fire trucks. We then turn to Rossmore for part five where we will discuss the nurturing and care of one of the first planned communities. Then finally we will cover the actual events which caused the community of Los Alamitos to enter the bonds of cityhood. Now stay with us to share some of the secrets of our early civic lives Remembering that past is truly prologue. Welcome to the Los Alamitos Historical Museum. We're going to take you back through history using the museum as a tool, and I'm going to be your docent. I'm Mert Parashow. First, I think we'll start with the building. The building itself is very interesting. It's the last adobe building built in Los Alamitos. It was built, uh, started in the 40s, and opened in 1947. And they really needed a fire department in this town because their 1928 fire engine had been sitting out in a vacant lot. So they, they contacted the county. The county agreed to build the building, the shell only. The volunteer firemen did the building themselves. The adobe came out of the Santa Ana Hills that went into the bricks. And when it was all finished, it was up to the volunteer firemen to finish off the inside, get by their equipment, so it meant a lot of fundraising. It also brought them quite close together. Shirley Hubert gave us a scrapbook on the volunteer fire department, and it's a treasure, pictures and letters. But in it, we found this letter, and I, I've just got to read it to you. This is the very first meeting of the volunteer fire department held September 19, 1944, and these are the minutes from the meeting. An attempt was made to hold a meeting of those interested in the organization of a volunteer fire department. In spite of the noise, the chairman, August Laberdet, asked for nominations for the post of chief. There was no response, so the chairman nominated Ambrose Fish, and the nomination was seconded by Leon Curry. There being no further nominations, it was moved that the nominations be closed. The matter was put to a vote, and Ambrose Fish was elected chief of the Los Alamitos Fire Department. Mr. Ben Lieberman tried to explain the workings of the gift of the equipment and the need for cooperation from this community. But after answering a few questions, he was compelled to retire as the children were so impatient to see the picture that they had made considerable noise. In fact, it was bedlam. An excellent picture of the War of Russia followed. The stark horror of so many of the scenes brought the war much closer, and many realized we are fighting a nation of inhuman fiends. Respectively submitted Grace Johnson, Secretary Pro Tem. This building was a high spot in town during the floods, and this town flood a lot. 
And uh, one day they sent, I think it was Mr. Tucker, in a rowboat across the street to pick up a very large woman and row her back over here. Well, then they all ran to the window to watch. And of course it happened. When she stepped in, they both went over. So they had to walk back in about four feet of water back across to the fire station for safety. I like those kind of stories. Also, they uh, held dances in here. They pulled the truck out on Saturday night, and this was a cement floor before the carpet, and have dances. Then on Sunday, they pulled the trucks out again, and this became a skating rink for the children, a roller rink. I, I like those stories. Then we had, um, we also had at one of our meetings, a fireman stand up and say that they were rationed with water quite a bit. They couldn't ha have all the water they wanted, so they had to learn to fight the fires with smaller amounts of water. And he was proud to say that they may have lost a few houses, but they never lost a foundation. <laughs> I like that one, too. <laughs> uh, the firemen, when they left here, and uh, th it was no longer just a volunteer fire department, this building had to be used for something nonprofit. So the Girl Scouts appeared before the City Council, Los Alamos City Council, as well as the, Los, the Rossmore Women's Club. And the Girl Scouts wanted this building for their headquarters. The Women's Club wanted it for a museum. The City Council wisely decided to make it into a museum. And that's how we started here about 10 years ago. Now we're at the Indian case. And this time we're going to do it as if we've got a fifth grade tour coming through, which we have a lot of school tours coming through this museum. But the fifth grade is a good level because you can get into depth with them a little bit more. And the name of the Indians that were in Los Alamitas are called, and they love this name, Poovoos. So when we get to the Poovoo Indians, we always go like this. All right, group, now say it with me. Poovoo. Very good. Now we're going to spell it. P-U-V-U, the Poovoo Indians. <laughs> they love that. Those Indians were, um, they, they liked to have more fun than they liked to work. They did no agriculture. They were more backwards than a lot of the Indian tribes. They lived off mainly acorns. They lived off the land, the fishing. Uh, they, if you ever go up to La, Rancho Los Alamitos, there is a dump site from the Puvu Indians behind the tennis court. There's a path behind the tennis court. If you go up there, you'll find the shells left over from the sea life that they ate. Uh, very interesting up there. They did do one thing real well. They were great weavers, and they made very, very good uh, tight woven baskets. And I like the name of their huts. They were called wickiups, and that was the name of the little huts that they lived in. So let's go down here and take a look at some of the Indian things that we have in the case. We've got some of the pots, some of the uh, uh, arrowheads, some of the uh, flint stones, grinders, jewelry. This was all given to us by local residents. Our shell collection amazes both the children and the adults that come in here. We're really proud of it because every single one of these shells were picked up on Seal Beach. Can you imagine that at one time all these shells laid there on that beach? The reason they don't now is because we have the breakwaters and, and the oil islands and a lot of disturbing has been going on to our coastline. But it, uh, if you find one of these shells there now, please don't pick them up because there is a fine. And the lady that gave us all the shells has been a collector for years, but she needed to get a few more shells to finish out our collection. So we wrote a letter for her from the museum and she presented that to the state and was given a permit to pick up a few more shells that rounded out our neat collection we've got here. Now we're at the Spanish land grant time and uh, the man that was really responsible for getting the land grant for this area was Manuel Nieto. And the policy of the time was that if they were very good officers and good soldiers that Spain gave them territory and big territory, lots of territory. Manuel Nieto happened to have the area all around Southern California down, Los Alamitos is at the top, down. Here is Los Alamitos on his grant. He later divided that into five separate parts, four for his children and one for himself, and one of those parts became Los Alamitos. Then also, we have a picture here of Figueroa, who was governor of California from 1833 to 1840, uh, 1835. He died in office at the age of 43. 
the reason for Los Alamitos is the sugar beet industry. It really brought everyone and everything to town. It was a huge building. It was built in uh, 19, 1897. It was built across the street from where Los Al High School is now on Cerritos. It was huge. The stack was 104 feet high, big machinery inside. It was really unbelievable. The pictures in this museum will really excite you when you come in because it was, uh, you just can't imagine anything that large in this town. At its prime, it brought in $2 million a year. Now that's, that was a lot of money at the turn of the century. It's a lot of money now, but that was really a lot then. They employed a lot of people. They had lots of parties, lots of picnics. The children and everyone dressed up and they had yearly picnics. They had games such as, guess what time and what day the last sugar beet's going to be sliced, and then they had prizes. Now they brought them the beets from the fields in their wagons, pulled by horses, usually six horses, to the railroad tracks and loaded them on the boxcars. The sugar beet industry brought in uh, a lot of the people that we consider old timers now that still live here, like Bessie Yuskevich and her husband. He came from Poland. He was an expert on the seeds, planting of the, the sugar beet. The industry started to die out about 1925 because of an insect. Now that insect today could be handled, but at that time they were not able to take care of, of it and the, the beets just went. From then, the, the buildings were used by a lot of other people. But the buildings were uh, brick, some of them were brick. They were large and used by a lot of businesses. The first business to come in to take over from the sugar beets was Dr. Ross. Now, Dr. Ross dog food was sort of a, I don't, wouldn't call it a highlight in town, but it was a colorful period for Los Alamitos. They brought the horses from Mexico. Oh, the fifth graders don't like these stories. They brought the horses from Mexico and they unloaded them in Seal Beach. And at that time, Reagan was the main street in town, not Los Alamitos Boulevard. And the horses would be run through town up to the factory where they were slaughtered. Now, the people in town didn't like that. It caused a lot of dust and it wasn't, wasn't safe to have those horses running. And they didn't really like the stories they were hearing up at the, the processing plant. They were hearing stories like murders and then no one would find these bodies. I mean, it was really, now I don't know if those are true stories, but I, I've been told them as they are true stories, but I do know that we had one man in town that lost his arm at the Dr. Ross dog plant. So it was uh, an unsafe place to work. So finally that went out, and that was about the time of World War II, and Douglas took over the buildings and stored airplane parts in it. Then after World War II, many businesses came in. Uh, there's a garage door, roller door business there now, and they tore a lot of the buildings down. Colorful part in history are sugar beet industry buildings. Mr. Poe's father, uh, let's see, that would be Mr. Poe the first, helped uh, design some of the buildings that were up there, and one of them is still standing. It happens to be an all cement building without wood beams, which was quite advanced for that day, for its time. And that's how Los Alamitos really started, was the sugar beet industry. Los Alamitos had the look of an old western town, so a lot of the movie studios didn't bother putting up their sets. They just used, came out to Los Alamitos and used our town. And this picture is 1912, but in 1917 they filmed a silent movie called Bond of Blood. And Bill Poe was in that movie as a child, shooting marbles in the street. And the museum has a copy of that movie.
at Los Alamitos Mexican American Community uh, put together this picture for us and we just love it. It's of some wedding pictures and school pictures, graduation pictures. And this, it's very amazing to me that these families that were first settled here are still in town, not only with the Spanish people, but with everyone that came to this community early. The Poes, the Huberts, they're all, their children and their grandchildren still live here. It's great. Then we go down here to St. Isidore's Church, uh, beautiful old church. During the 1933 earthquake, it did crumble. And while they were rebuilding it, they held mass in the general store. But, but it was all totally re, uh, rebuilt. Then we're going to go over to the very first, the steeple from the very first church built in Los Alamitos. Let's pan over here. This came from the uh, Community Congre Congregational Church. For, it was built in 1896. Now, when we do children's tours through here, this is one of our secret stories we give them. Now, we tell them to bring their parents back when we're open on Tuesdays and Sundays from 2 to 4, and when they come in, they're going to have a secret place that only children are told about to show their parents. You see, if you lift this sign off, you will find right here a bullet hole. Now, it was fun to do years ago when there was no TV to go out and shoot at things that made noise, and this tin made a lot of noise. It's got a couple of bullet holes in there, but the best one is hidden underneath the sign. Secrets. Now we're going to talk about the school system in Los Alamitos. First school was built in 1881, and it was built on the site where Bob's Big Boy is right now, at the corner of Catella and Los Alamitos Boulevard. That, uh, that was a small one-room school. <clears throat> After that, they built two more schools there, and they were called Laurel School. Uh, when I moved to this town, there was still the last one on that site, and it had a big tree of tree grove, beautiful eucalyptus grove of trees in front of it, and those were planted by Bixby for firewood for the farmers in the area. That was part of the grove that was also down at the golf course in Los Alamitos. Now, the uh, school system at that time was quite small, and I like to bring some of the old timers into history. Uh, Bill Poe, who has lived in this community since he was a young boy, uh, probably in the early 20s, his father was on the school board, and Bill was on the school board. And they had a lot to do with a lot of things in this town. His dad was even uh, responsible for getting the first curbs in town. But they did a lot to build the school district into a wonderful school district that we have now. Uh, after the third school was torn down, the schools were then built in neighborhoods. And we now have uh, well, we've had two junior highs up until about a year ago, and one high school and many grade schools. A lot of the people in town come in and still find themselves in these pictures as children. It's kind of fun to watch them come in and say, there I am, and, and who is that, and I remember that guy. One fellow in here has got a broken arm in one of the pictures, and he came in and told us about how he broke his arm. We have a case here at the museum full of uh, school supply things from Laurel School, including a picture of the second school. <clears throat> it's a really a neat looking old building. And we have some report cards, some of the books. We have the big scroll that they use to flip over with the, uh, it's colored. Um, come on in and take a look and see if that report card belongs to you. So this is our, our school district. Leo Layton's blacksmith shop was located on Los Alamitos Boulevard, just above Catella a block on the west hand side and it was in a big Quonset hut looking type building dirt floor very big bellows and and everything you'd ever imagine in there is really neat we took the docents on a tour through there once the museum docents and we had a ball now his his chaps are over here in the case the that his dad wore his dad's name was Leo he um, wore those chaps to work we've got a number of his uh, tools in this case and I think one of the real interesting things, um, the blades that the farmers used on their plow, each farmer thought he had the key design of a blade. And so he had his own special blade stock. And, and Mr. Layton would hang all of these blades on the wall at the blacksmith shop. And all the farmer had to do was ride by and say, Leo, make up one of my blades for me. And he had the pattern right there. The, we also have his bucket that he melted lead. 
and some of the horseshoes. And his son, Leo Layton, the fire chief, has done a number of things for the museum here, making uh, crossbars for the doors and, and protection. And anything we ever ask for, he does it. And the bill always says, this is your Christmas gift. A little bit of the history here in Los Alamitos and through the telephone book. Now, this is the city directory in 1940. Uh, Seal Beach, Sunset Beach, Surfside, and Los Alamitos, it's all in the same little book. And as we thumb through it, we find that it not only tells the name of the person and their wife's name, it tells their occupation, labor, hamburger owner, hamburger shop. That's the William Bruckman and Catherine owned a hamburger shop. And if they lived upstairs, it says upstairs. Then it has uh, a little history in the front of how each club in town has been started. We've got the Recreation Club, the Masons, the Volunteer Fire Department, Boy Scouts, and it tells in the phone book how it was started. I love that book. We've also got a tax bill here from H.C. Uh, Lawrence, uh, 1908 taxes, and they were $2.72 for, for his year. Bill Pohl gave us some of his as well. They were $1.50, something like that. Uh, then we've got down here um, a quickie thing here on Rossmore. When, we remember when it says, and that's when Rossmore began, and some pictures of the first shovel, dirt, and so on. One of the more interesting things in this town was the Los Alamitos Mounted Police. Uh, they were very active during the 60s. They disbanded in 1979. While they were active, they rode in the roast parades. They won a lot of trophies for different parades. They're a very close-knit group. It became kind of hard to keep it up because new homes built in and the stables were taken over by the new homes and some of the newer police that were coming on weren't as interested as the older guys were and it became very expensive to house those horses around. So it disbanded, but while it was going, it was a going group. This, this I thought was very interesting, and I never realized it, but Los Alamitos had a float in the Rose Parade in 1949. The uh, uh, air base over here put this float in the Rose Parade. Our mural we're very proud of. It was designed by Leo Green, who was a president of the museum at one time. Designed and drew it, and then Robert Fisher actually crawled up in the ladder and painted this all on the walls for us. Robert was a senior in high school at the time that he did this. must be the water in Los Alamitos. There's something is great going on here because we sure have the athletes. The Hall of Fame at the Los Alamitos Museum is full. Our cases are great. We have in this case the Cox family. The three Cox children are quite active in uh, swimming. The one that I think you hear of the most maybe is Lynn and she has just finished a round the world swim which is wonderful. She swam all the lakes, the rivers, and everything and circled the, the globe. A lot of uh, attention, and that was just a couple of months ago. Her brother and her sister also swam. Her sister is very active with the Girls Water Polo National League. And we've got another case right here. In this case, we have a beautiful trophy that Larry Andresen won in Japan, plus his other medals. Larry uh, is a diver, and he won a bronze in the Olympics. Tremendous height off a diving board, great legs. 
And down below over here, we have Greta Anderson, who was a channel swimmer and owned a swimming school in Los Alamitos. And here we have the most famous of them all, I think, is Pat McCormick. She won four gold medals in two different Olympics. This is our tribute to the Olympics. We uh, have in this case the people that uh, were in the Olympics, in the sports, and also the volunteers that helped run the Olympics when it was in Los Angeles. A lot of people from Los Alamitos worked to the Los Angeles Olympics. This is Kathy Rigby's case. I think most everyone knows who Kathy is and her gymnastics. She did well in the Olympics and graduated from Los Al High School. We have here Andy Messerschmitt's beautiful gold glove, and that was really his glove. Uh, we haven't got time to go through all the famous people. Come on in and take a look at these cases yourself. But we do have Dennis Lamp of the Cubs and uh, Buddy Foote, who set records in a sailplane altitude. We have the cheerleaders who won the National Cheerleading Award from Los Al High School. We've even got a racehorse in here that became famous. I've lived in this community for 20 years, and I feel real fortunate that I've lived here for many reasons. One, it's a community with a real history. It's not like some towns that sprung up because of housing uh, during World War II. We've got a real background here to research. I think we're lucky because we have a community that gave us this building to be a museum. Also, the city gave us their, loaned us their great Olympic flags that we have hung all over here. It's, it's a, that type of town. Most of all, I think we're fortunate because of the volunteers in this town. Not just the town, but the Los Alamitos community that have worked to put this together and many other things together in this community.